Hey, welcome back. Um, today, what we probably want to do is finally finish a project. And we've been working on a lot of things. We've been working on short table. We worked on um, uh, picture frames. We worked on the cheese board. We're going to finish up that cheese board today because now's the fun part. And you guys weren't around for the not so fun part, which was me sanding like crazy to make a cheese board really look super nice. I was able to do that with both boards. I don't know if you remember the first, the smaller one, and then the larger one that we said kind of almost looks like a pizza peel. Uh, what I wanted to do today was, would be to drill a hole in the top handle so I could hang these with a nice little leather strap on it. And I'm gonna do that on both of these. I'll drill holes um, directly in the center of the handle, maybe about three quarters of an inch down from the top. Uh, I'm gonna set up the drill press and then just as a quick refresher, show you guys how to take a drill bit out and put a, a, a new drill bit in. And um, again, I always say with woodworking, the thinking is the hard part and to kind of project from mistakes that you've made before uh, mistakes that you don't want to repeat. And I've made tons of them. I tell everybody in the shop, who makes the most amount of mistakes in here? I look around and everybody points the finger at me. Yeah, it's going to be me because I spend the most amount of time in the shop. But one mistake that always bothered me, um, I remember making one of these cheese boards for my wife. And when you have something that looks like this, well, you use it for cutting breads, you use it for cutting cheese, you use it for cutting vegetables, you use it for cutting fruit. And I'll never forget taking out the cheese board, putting it down on the counter, taking a nice sharp knife and looking at this gorgeous, beautiful cantaloupe. And I said, boy, this is going to taste so good. So what I did was I took my knife, I started to slice it open, I put it on the cheese board, I'm slicing it off the rind, of course some of it fell on the cheese board, and it was no big deal, I just scooped that up, put it right into a bowl, now I cut up about half a cantaloupe, I'm all set to go, this is going to be tremendous. So I snap open the paper when we used to have newspapers, I'm at the kitchen table, I'm ready to relax, read the paper, and eat my cantaloupe. I start taking my cantaloupe, and something about this cantaloupe was very deceiving. It looked really good. It was super orange, super sweet, smelled great, but it tasted like onions. And I remember going, a cantaloupe that tastes like onions? What's, what's going on with that? And it was one of those things where I always said, why does this cantaloupe taste like onions? I traced it back to the night before when we were having some stir fry and I was cutting up onions on that very side of the board that I was working on the day I cut my cantaloupe up. So any onion juices went on this bad boy and of course they transferred to my cantaloupe. I remember having um, uh, pineapple pineapple that tasted like rutabagas. Uh, I don't want to mix flavors. That's classic flavor mixing, and that's a no good. So what I want to do as I think about this cheese board is if this is going to happen to somebody else, I want to avoid that. I want to think ahead. So here's what I did on one little cutting board that I made that I always loved. I thought it was so cool. On this cheese board, this particular side, I put a V here. I just drew it out, just freehanded the letter V. And on this back side, I put the letter F. So that if anybody's gonna use this and they wanna cut up a cabbage, potatoes, onions, mushrooms, anything that's a vegetable, they'll work on this side. And if you do the flavor mixing with vegetables, I don't think it's that big of a deal. And the same thing is true with the fruit side. I have no problem with a cantaloupe and a, and a pineapple. I do have a cantaloupe uh, issue when I mix it with an onion. So I'm gonna route these two letters, the V for the vegetable and the F for the fruit. And I'm gonna try to do this rather quickly. This has all been sanded, everything is done. I just wanna take a little router with a little eighth inch veining bit. And I'm just gonna put a little indent in here and take a look and see how good I do this. 
I'll probably do this one later. I want to take care of this one first. In order to do this, what I did was marked it out. And of course, I'm going to do the easiest letter first because I haven't routed in a while. So I'm going to set this up so my V on my vegetable side is facing up. I'm going to take this board and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put two of these deep throw clamps on this very side. When I do this, I don't want to make it real close to the V because I have to remember that that router has got to move around a little bit when I'm routing. So I'm gonna put one over here, I'll put one over here. Please remember that you're gonna back the hand screws all the way out if you're using a bar clamp or a deep throw clamp to make sure you use maximum um, threads on this clamp so you get maximum pressure. So what I'll do is I'll clamp one down, I'll clamp the other one down. I don't know if it's my strength, but this one takes a lot longer to tighten. So my board's not going to move. I'm all set. The router that I used is the one that most people use to route signs. And what's good about this router, it has a small eighth inch veining bit. So it's very, very narrow. It's not going to be a large letter and I don't have a big space for my V or my F. So I'm going to take this router and what I'll do is I'll plug it into my extension cord. And I'm going to tell you, as I plan ahead and continue to plan ahead, what I did was I got a stool out. Because I think that stool is something that I need. When you have a big caboose like mine, it's hard to balance it as you're routing. So I'll take that, move that out of the way. I don't have sleeves, so I don't have anything to roll up. But I do want to put on a pair of glasses. All set. I don't trust myself. Now, I think this is the time where you need bifocals, my two pair of glasses, because this is gonna be some fine work. So let me clean these off. Take these, put them, oh, there you are. Hello there. I'll address the router. Hello, router. I'll move over here, position myself where I'm gonna route. And what I really like about this little DeWalt router is it almost feels like a pencil in my fingers. It's very small, it's easy, it's lightweight. So I don't have a lot of uh, bulky three horsepower router to move around. The other thing that's cool about this router is when I turn on the on off switch, a light's gonna come in here. So it kind of accentuates what I'm gonna route. So I'll turn it on. The other thing I always wanna tell you guys whenever you work with a router, especially this where it's free handed, you always want to start the router and stop the router off of the wood. That's going to be your question. If I'm routing, I always start a router off of the wood so it doesn't make contact with the wood and always stop it off of the wood. When I do that, it ensures that this is not going to grab hold of the wood and throw my router back. So here we go. I'll turn this bad boy on. I'll ask the cameraman so that they come in here and take a look at this. With the router on, I'm gonna drop it right in place. So it's going down maybe about an eighth to three sixteenths of an inch. What I'm gonna do is just go across to form my V, slide this up. I put a little dot on the bottom of that. Now what I wanna do is I wanna shut it with the router off of the wood. I tilt it back. I'll shut it off, I'll let it come to a complete stop. It's kind of hard to see how I did because I have a bunch of wood in there, if you take a look. So to get a better look, I'll get a piece of abrasive paper, maybe a piece of 120. I'll just sand that up a little bit. And I'll get my compressor. And we'll blow out some of that dust that's in there. So if I look at that, how does that look? I don't think it looks bad. The thing that always bothers me is when people try to get a router letter to be too perfect. Because if you make it too perfect, it looks awful. There's jigs that they sell where you could take a router and route letters in, but it doesn't look human. I think that V looks pretty darn good. Again, 
I guess I picked a good week to give up drinking. I'm gonna loosen this up. And I'm gonna flip the board to the other side and see if I have the same uh, success with my F. And what's pretty funny is when people ask me, like the cameraman, said, um, let's see, you got a V and you got an F. What project are you making? So I said, well, it's a cheese board. And cameraman said, well, how come there's not a C in it? Like, where do you cut the cheese? Well, you cut the cheese in the bathroom. <laughs> chortle, chortle, chortle. Well, actually, um, I'd probably cut the cheese on the fruit side, although if you don't mind a little onion in your cheese, you could put it on the V side. But it is a cheese board, but I think more people use this for fruit than anything else. This really does look cool, especially if you're serving bread and cheese with a bottle of wine. It's really inviting. Let's see if I can have some success with my F. I'll do it the same exact way. Two pair of glasses. I'll turn the router on and I'll drop it down first onto that surface. I'm going to follow this back. Put a little dot on the end of it. I'm going to come up here for the top A little dot on that. And then I'll come back here for the little one. And then a little dot on that. I'm going to roll it back. If I look at that, how does that look? That looks pretty good. I think it looks bad. For a middle-aged blind man. Again, my 120, I'll sand this up. And I just want to show you something here. Compressor. Take a look. Let's see how imperfect this is. There's one thing about this F I don't like, is this right here. If you notice, it kind of bellies out a little bit. But as is always the case, if I went back to try to make that even, what will happen is that F becomes bigger on the longest leg. So it's gonna be bigger here, and then I'm gonna have to make the legs, the shorter legs, wider. I don't want to do that. I look at that, I'm going, look, I'm a human. That's the best I can do. I'm done with that. So I have a really cool kind of F and kind of V on it. Now, let's drill the hole and finish this bad boy off. So watch the way I'm going to measure this out. I'm going to take this cutting board. doesn't matter what side I use. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a mark about three quarters of an inch down from the back end, from this end, the short end. And I'm going to do it exactly centered, okay? So let's see, let me get out my tape measure. No, I don't think so. I think if I look by eye, maybe do I put two pair of, no, I don't even think I need two pair of glasses on this. I think that looks like that's about the center. That's about the center. Like I said, that's about the center. Now I'm gonna go over to the drill press and drill the hole. You don't want this hole to get too close to this end because if you do, remember the grain's running in this direction, if it's real close to the end, that could chip very easily. So you want about three quarters of an inch away from that end. That might be about five, five eighths or 11 sixteenths. Might be a little less than three quarters. Here's the other thing I found out. If you drill this hole and it's not exactly centered, it looks awful. If it's off to one side or the other, people will think you have a drinking problem. So what I wanna do is I wanna set this up so I drill or put or mark a little bit of a pilot hole so that the drill bit can go in there and never wander. I'm sure you've tried to drill a hole at an angle and what you find out is the drill bit moves, it wanders. So to prevent that from happening, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a finishing nail. The ones that we have in the shop are usually a lot smaller. This is a, a pretty large finishing nail. I wanna unplug this router so that nobody turns it on by mistake and gets the surprise of their lives. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the sharp point of that finishing nail and actually start it right at that center point. I'm gonna take a little hammer, 
and I do mean a little hammer. And I'll line this up as accurately as a blind man can. That doesn't look too bad. That looks pretty good. Maybe a little bit over. Right there is pretty good. I'm just gonna start this nail. So when I start the nail, the drill bit has an area where it could grab onto and not slide around. The next thing, let's go over to the drill press and drill this hole. Wouldn't you know it, wrong drill bit in there. So I have to take this drill bit out. How many times do I say to you guys, you remember how to do this? Here we go, Chucky. The chuck key's gonna go into the chuck. This larger bit's coming out. Which bit is going in? A quarter inch drill bit. A quarter inch regular twist bit is, is gonna go in there. Right now in here is a 5 8 Forstner bit. That's that flat bottom bit that we use um, pretty often. I'm gonna take the pin of the chuck key, stick it into the pin of the chuck. Turn this, which direction? Oh yes, counterclockwise. Remembering that there's a piece of wood on the bottom of this, so this drill bit doesn't fall through the hole. So the scrap piece of wood's there. I'm gonna take my drill bit, my 5 8 Forstner bit, just slide it up here. And now I'm gonna take my quarter inch regular standard twist bit. That bit was a lot wider than this bit. So if I take this and put it in, it's flopping around like crazy. Do you guys remember how you closed this jaw without using the Chucky a million times? Hmm. You're gonna take the sleeve. If I move the sleeve in this direction, so I'm gonna say it's kind of if I face the front of it towards my right, you notice that those jaws will close down. What I wanna do is I wanna put the jaws on the drill bit. I don't like them on this area over here, the webs and the flutes. I like them when they're on the solid piece of the drill bit, part of the drill bit. Now I'm gonna take my chuck key and I'm gonna tighten down my chuck key by moving it in a clockwise direction. Take the chuck key out, I'm all set, ready to drill my hole. Now something that you should keep in mind, if I take this drill bit and I just drill straight on through, the front side of this hole is gonna look nice and clean. But no matter how slow I go, a lot of times what will happen is it'll chip out on the back side. And the reason why it chips out is because you're putting pressure with the drill bit and you're forcing wood fibers away. So my suggestion is, and there's one of two ways you can do this. I can take a smaller drill bit. We often use a 7 64th drill bit in the shop. Drill that all the way through. Then put a larger bit on, go halfway into this pilot hole, Take the board, flip it around, finish the hole from the back side, and then you have two clean sides because you never went all the way through it. It's like building the Lincoln Tunnel. Um, they don't start from the Jersey side and get to the New York side. They start at the Jersey side and the New York side, and they meet in the middle. This is the same exact way. I could do it that way if I wanted to prevent it from chipping. Another way, which I'm gonna use today, is gonna be this little piece of scrap wood. I'm gonna take the scrap wood and put it on the drill press. Now I'm gonna take my cheese board, line up the point with the drill bit that I have to drill. Uh-oh, uh-oh, doesn't fit. What do I do? How about drop the table? Remember that one? I told you the table's 90 pounds. What you're gonna do is get your teacher and he will drop it. Why? Because he does push-ups every day. I'm gonna take the table, I dropped it down. I'm gonna take my board, lay it flat on here. I'm gonna line this up so it lines up exactly to that center point that I punched. And now I'm gonna drill a hole all the way through. The scrap wood will prevent the wood from chipping out on the back side, so I don't have to drill a pilot hole and then come in from the top and the bottom. I do wanna be accurate with this, so I will get out two pair of glasses. And oh boy, I'm getting close to the end of this project. Let me line this up as best as I can. That looks pretty good right there. I'm gonna hold on to my board. And when I do this, I wanna take my time and go slow. The other thing that will happen is the drill bit will usually self-center 
on any kind of mark that you put in there. I'm gonna go particularly slow at the end, keeping pressure down on my board. Now, I didn't feel like it went all the way through. Just to be on the safe side, I'm gonna go a little bit deeper. I'll shut it off, wait till it comes to a complete stop, pull this away. I can see that there's a hole on that side, which means there should be a hole all the way through on this side. So if you look at that, I think that looks pretty good on my vegetable side. The next thing that I'm gonna do and the very last thing that I'm gonna do is oil this. Let's go over to the old uh, workbench table. Yes, yes. Watch that. Watch that there, cameraman. This is the best part of the whole project. Maybe the second best part of the whole project. What I want to do is finish this. So what I want to do is I want to get a can of polyurethane. I want to get a brush and I want to start slopping. No, 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 Jackson. You can't do that. Why? Because you're going to use food on here that you're going to put in your mouth. And we all know that polyurethane can be toxic. And any other finish, lacquer, polyurethane, shellac, all of those can be an issue. So what I always want to do when I'm using anything that comes in contact with food is use mineral oil. There's two reasons for this, and this is one of the questions on your little quiz today. Why does he use mineral oil? Number one, mineral oil can be digested. You could drink this. It's a laxative. If you can't go to the bathroom on the back side, if you drink some of this, and they often give this to babies, it'll help them uh, let things go a little easier. That's one thing. The second thing is mineral oil is the only oil that will not go rancid. What's rancid? Rancid is when oil goes bad. If you've ever had an old can of poly, oh, polyurethane, <laughs> of uh, olive oil, vegetable oil, uh, safflower oil, could be any oil. If it's really old, it's gonna start to stink. And when it stinks and you put that on your board, it stays with that board for the life of the board. So you don't wanna put on some really bad oil or oil that's gonna go really bad. Mineral oil will never go rancid. So the two reasons why you use mineral oil, number one, it's digestible. Number two, it will never go rancid. Now I'm gonna take my oil, I'm gonna put it on my board, I'm gonna rub it in. This is the common mistake people make. They take this thing and they pour the whole thing on there. No, I don't want that. You wanna take a little bit and what you're gonna do is rub it in with one finger. Can I use a rag, Mr. Shimko? No, you can't use a rag. You can't use a rag because the oil just gets absorbed. It's just absorbing the oil. So I'm gonna take the oil, I'm gonna put a small amount on this corner and I always tell my students, what you have here is regular cutting board. What you will shortly have, as I move my finger around, is HD cutting board, because you're gonna see everything pop. As someone once said when they made a motorcycle, you're in it for the pop. If I look at this and I compare these two sides, you notice the maple, the oak, um, eh, the walnut. Um, I don't know if that's maple or cherry. No, that's cherry on the outside. That's what I thought. Cherry on the outside, but that's springwood uh, cherry, which is very light. It looks very similar to maple. What I'm going to do is I'm rubbing this in, and I'm putting it on the end, and I'm going to put it on the edge. So what I'll do is I'll continue to do this. I don't want to wipe this off. When I put this stuff on, I want it to stay on overnight. And then when I come in the next day, get up some paper towels. I like the drier, the better. Those industrial paper towels that we use in our shop work really well. And then wipe that because what will happen is dust goes onto that oil. It's going to make it feel a little rough. So I'm going to get one of those paper towels. I'm not going to wipe it off, but I just want to show you what I'm talking about. I'm not using Bounty or anything like that. I never knew this, but someone told me that there's actually oil in Bounty paper towels. These are as dry as can be. Why? Because they're as cheap as can be. If I put this oil on and it does not puddle, 
In other words, it's not leaving like a puddle on the surface. I could take it and I could flip it over and I could do this side. I always put it on two little pieces of scrap wood so the scrap wood doesn't absorb any of that oil as well. So I will oil this side, I'm gonna oil the other side, and my very last job on this is to put that leather strap on that I talked to you about. I'm gonna take a piece probably about 12 to 14 inches long. Um, this piece is about, I don't know, 28, 29 inches, so it's about that, that size. What I want to do is I'm going to cut this in half. Oh, you could stay there, cameraman. You don't have to follow me. Cameraman was the one who mentioned about the C for the cheese on the cheese board. I take a chisel, just snap that piece in half. This will be the very last step. And usually I do this after I put the oil in. A kid showed me this because I don't know how to tie knots. I was never a Boy Scout, and for that, I'm sorry. But it always looks better if you take this, double it up, and make a double knot out of this. Simply pull this and leave it so it flares out a little bit on the ends, squeeze it together, and your cutting board is done. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this off because I really wanna oil this today. I'll finish this up, and I'll show you the finished product Maybe when you're working on your, um, when I'm, I finish my uh, picture frame. But this project is basically done. Same with the other cheese board. I just got to figure out a way how I could route a C in this on one side. But I guess that's another project for a different time. You guys have a great day. Hope to see you soon again.